Welcome to Boys, episode 165. I'm Robbie Ray. I'm Josh. And it's just the two of us. We can make it if we try, just the two of us. You and I. Thank you. I would do the lower one because that's uh, from Austin Powers. Yes. Right? Is that, okay, do they do just the two of us in gold member or do they do it? Uh, no, they had to do it in gold member. I think it was gold member. Where they were in jail. Yes. Yeah. Oh, classic film. So great film. Classic piece of cinema. We're going to get right to the show, but first, just a bit of business. Actually, a lot of business, all right? I'm not going to bullshit you. Boyspodcast.com. It's a hub of all things boys. There you will find links to our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, as well as that golden donate button if you're feeling generous. If you want to give back, if you want to say thanks, smash it, as Robbie says. Just, just go ahead and just smash that button. The harder you press it, the less money you have to give us. So you don't have to give us anything. But. I guess technically, if, if you're on like an iPad or something, touch screen, you can smash it. What's that called? Haptic feedback. Oh, that sounds cyberpunk. I don't know. It might, it's something like that. I love it. Boys is available on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, YouTube, Spotify. If you're on the Spotify, all one word, all lowercase, Boys Podcast. And then you click on that search icon. I believe it's a magnifying glass. Usually is. And uh, guess what? Every damn app is on there. Give it a listen. I like listening to things on Spotify because you can put it in the background. Uh, without losing it. Right. YouTube, re- you know, those money-hungry fat cats at YouTube. Why in your app do I have to pay money to listen to something in the background? Yeah. I don't want red. I don't want music. No one wants red. And then, you know, you can feel a little sneaky and a little crafty. Mm-hmm. And you can find these shitty third-party apps in the app store. Yeah. That you can, you know, kind of do that. But then the new update comes out and they don't work anymore. Damn it, YouTube. Quit being so fucking greedy. Like, you don't make enough money with monetization. No. Commercials, ads, banners. I'll tell you this. Have you seen any episodes of that Cobra Kai show on YouTube, Red? Nope. I don't think anybody has. No. I ain't watching. I ain't paying. But every damn day, I get a fucking message from YouTube saying, hey, you want a free trial of YouTube music? Don't want it. Never smashed a button faster than the no thanks on that. Oh, I love... And so it says no thanks. And the way I hear it in my head, as soon as I first like, no thanks. Yeah. No, nah. <laughs> not for me. <laughs> not for me. I'm going to save my six bucks a month or whatever it is. Totally. Uh, leave a review on iTunes. Help us rise up to the ranks. Subscribe. Um, I, I guess you can subscribe to us on YouTube. I don't really know where people subscribe to things. I, right. I would say mainly through iTunes, you know, the podcast iTunes, app. True. Podcast I, I use apps. Downcast myself. It's a wonderful podcast. I'm still app. the old man on Stitcher. I'm, I'm hoping I'm hoping that it's going to come the way of uh, being. Uh, what's what's that word when something old becomes cool again? Like not nostalgic, but like. Right. Oh, I'm going blank here. Like records became vinyl became cool again. Yeah. It's like, just a, a fad that comes back. Stitcher will be that fad that comes. back. Oh, man. Love Stitcher. And you'll be like, I've been here since the beginning in 2014, bro. It lets me know at the very bottom. Listening since February of 2012. Oh, does it really? Mm-hmm. Look at that. Wear it as a badge of honor, my friend. Seven years. Email us, boys at boyspodcast.com. Send us some feedback, questions, comments, concerns, criticism. You know the drill. Throw your physical address in the bottom. We'll send you out some stickers. Got a nice little assortment here. We're happy to send out. And some brand new business cards so you can... Make it even easier to tell a friend about the show. You just These pass them a card. business cards are beautiful. I don't mean to pat myself on the back and toot my own horn, but they're great. And you can have one. You did a good job designing them, Robbie. Thank you. Shoot us an email, boys at boyspodcast.com. Thanks to our sponsors, Anthem Brewing. Perfect crack. Dude. So that, perfect. That slow. Yeah. I heard the. Right before it. It was so I good. I love that. Anthembrewing.com. Uh, tap room open. I believe it's open seven days a week. Uh, check them out. They got great beers on tap. Good staff, good people. Anthembrewing.com. Tell them boys sent you, man. We'd love that. Yeah. It's all about word of mouth of this podcast. So you tell them boys sent you, they're going to they're gonna think that's so cool. First of all, they're going to think you're cool because you listen to a cool podcast. Maybe Oklahoma's, dare I say Oklahoma's best podcast. Non, okay, Oklahoma's best non-topical podcast hosted by the two friends that have been friends since seventh grade and went to Choctaw. 
Uh, 100%. Clear winners. Clear winners. All Number right. one, gold. Gold butt? Gold ticket? Gold. Number one with a bullet. Uh, Fat Bison. Fatbison.com. Uh, you've heard us talk about them. I'm going to continue talking about them. Maker of fantastic wood. If you follow him on Instagram, Fat Bison, on Instagram, you see the great signs that he makes. Yep. The great furniture he makes. He's making a sign for me right now, and we'll talk about it here in a minute. Okay. But a uh, quality craftsmanship. Quality craftsmanship. From a quality dude. Quality guy. Friend of the show. Friend of us. And friend of wood. He loves wood. He respects wood. To quote Larry David. <laughs> Uh, champion vintage champion vintage okc on instagram that's champion underscore vintage underscore okc on instagram check out what they have i'm gonna throw out two more free ones for you guys do it summerland wellness boutique they sell great cbd products great guys and gals our home yeah and gals and our homie on the last show celtic kratom once again it's a great show it's super fun good responses from that good guy people a good guy if you're in the Bethany, I know it's a bit of a trek to get here. It's technically Oklahoma City. I know. On the skirts, as they say. The outskirts. Right. Uh, Is there a such thing as an inskirts? <laughs> yeah, I live, <laughs> I live right on the inskirts of Bethany, Oklahoma. The innards. <laughs> the innards of Bethany. Uh, go check out a shop, Celtic Kratom. You know, speaking of skirts, that might be one of the oldest inside jokes that we share. Yes. We share it with Matt from Fat Bison. We send it with or share it with our friend Colin, who is a boys alum, mm-hmm. longtime friend of us and friend of the show. We were in a punk band together. I was, gosh, I must have been like 18, 17 or 18 when it started. Yeah. And uh, we had an EP, you know, back on a cassette back in the day. It had, I think it had five or six songs on it. And uh, it was back in the early days of the Internet. And there was a website called mulletsgalore.com. Do you remember mulletsgalore.com? I do. I do. They it had, was just uh, an amalgamation of pictures of people with shitty mullets. Yeah, it was just, it was like the imger, I hope I'm saying that right, the imger of mullets. And it, it wasn't like a hot or not where you rated the mullet or anything like that. You couldn't comment on the mullet. It was just a thumbnail gallery. That's a term I haven't used in a long time. Thumbnail gallery of mullets. And we found what we were, we were, we, we had a lot of time on our hands when we were 17, 18 years old. So we'd go over and Colin had a high-speed internet before I did. Before DSL, Atlanta. right? I think so, yeah. And we would look at fear, what was it called? Oh, what was it? Mulletsgalore.com. Mm-hmm. I think their sticker said fear the mullet or yeah. don't fear the mullet or something like that. And we would look at mullets and then they would always have funny captions. And there was this one picture in particular. And it was this creepy looking dude. Like, you couldn't tell if he was 14 or 50. Yeah. And he had a weird, it was it almost looked like a mug shot. And he had this weird mesh shirt on. Yeah, like a, like a tank top like kind of Like a mesh thing? tank top, yeah. yeah. And he had a huge head, and he had a mullet, but the top of it, it was like your basic, like, uh, classic male pattern baldness, the horseshoe, yeah. but it was really grown out. Like strapping young lad, kind of. Yeah, much like that. And they called it the skirted eggshell, which I thought was just the most brilliant thing. Like, think of a, a beautiful grade A large white egg. Yeah. Flip that joker upside down and then put a hula skirt on it. Mm-hmm. It was a skirted eggshell. So we loved that so much. We named our EP in our old punk band the skirted eggshell EP, which no one got. Yeah. Yeah. Used the photo from the website, creepily, you know, recreated in, in an early version of Photoshop. Yeah, I mean, like grainy and... Yeah, printed out at Kinko's. Mm-hmm. I had a friend that worked there, so we printed our, our J cards that went inside the cassettes at Kinko's. The skirted eggshell. So that kind of evolved. You know, inside jokes with friends evolve over time. Sure. So then we started saying skirted. Like, oh man, that guy's skirted. Funny, right? Mm-hmm. And then it evolved again into skirt. Look at that skirt. Yeah, shorten it. To this day, when I hear the word skirt, yeah. I have a little chuckle. Got to. It's great. Like if they're like, oh, like for instance, like around the bottom of a, of a home, they call it the skirting mm-hmm. or like a table skirt. Yeah. Or like a, a woman's skirt. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is, there, is there other skirts? Uh, Don't skirt the issue, I believe is one. That's one. Yeah, yeah. I, I love that term, skirting the issue. Don't skirt the What is that? But I don't understand what that would mean in that context. Like, I get, like, you know, a, a mobile home skirt. It's covering the 
the unsightly bottom. The uh, the the uh, bed skirt. Bed skirt. Yeah, there's That's, a skirt. Yeah. There's a skirt. There, there's always a skirt. Yep. Um, but yeah, skirting the issue is like, are you? I guess you're hiding the. Well, you're like going around it. Oh, maybe true. that's what it means. It's true. Skirt, skirting around skirting the issue. Around. Yeah, skirting around the outskirts, the, the inskirts. Inskirts. I love that. Lastly, thank you all for the donations, the feedback, the telling of a friend. Again, the most important part. It's our lifeblood. It's the blood that keeps this show alive and trucking like a northbound train. Tell a friend. And for those of you who have, thank you. A heartfelt thank you. I've always heard Southbound Train. Oh, really? Yeah. I think the Grateful Dead song is, I wish I was a headlight on a northbound train. I don't. But hey, they were topsy-turvy reefer heads. Weird, look yeah. weird. Wacky LSD. <laughs> um, we got a couple more things to talk about real quick before we get started on the show. Oh, yeah. We got a new hotline. We do. Boys Hotline. It's a, uh, it's a phone number you call. I don't know if you kids, you kids today. The thing's called Hotline. It's a phone. There's an app on your phone. It looks, it's a green thing, and it looks like a telephone, like an old school telephone. It's Hotline Boys. You're going to push that, that, that icon, and it's going to bring up the screen with numbers on it. And you're going to, on that screen, push 405-582-0242. I think you're doing that wrong. What? And call 582-0242. Thanks, Dandy. Thanks, Dandy, for that one. It's been stuck in my fucking head. Yeah. Uh, he called and left that message for us. Uh, so call, leave us a message, uh, give us again, some love, some same, feedback. Same thing with the email, just yeah. in a vocal form. Yeah. Say hi. If you got a joke, a weird, crazy story that's better told verbally than written down. Cause sometimes sto- some stories are better spun vocally than, or if you just want to hear your voice on this wonderful show. Very true. It's fun. You're giving a self shout out. Yeah. You're self sucking. Yeah. With the hotline, which is. 405-582-0242. That's right. Last but not least, we've been talking about it for the last few weeks now. The flyers are going up. It's official, like a referee with the whistle. We got Blink 405 starring Josh Montgomery, Robbie Ray, and our friend Chris Van Dyne. We're playing at the Speakeasy Saturday, September 28th at 9 p.m. Doors are at 9. Get there around 9. Get mm-hmm. a good spot. You know how the speakeasy is. Get in there and get you, get you a good spot. Get you a good spot. Get yourself a beer. If you smoke, go out, grab yourself a smoke. Have a little time. Get some food. Get a little grub. Hang out. Yeah. So, you know, Josh and I have loved the band Blink-182 since we were in high school. Mm-hmm. And we decided since it was the 20-year anniversary of their wonderful album, Enema of the State, we're going to perform that Joker in its entirety, front to back, side to side, Plus a bunch of other hits. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a good time. If you're a fan of Blink-182 or just a fan of... Rock music. Live rock, music. Live music. If you're into live music, no lawn chairs. Chairs will not be allowed in the venue. Uh, if you're a fan of Blink or any 90s, early 2000s, like pop punk, come out. It's going to be a good time. We're doing it. We're going all in. This we isn't are. Just, this isn't just dads picking up our Squire Stratocasters and playing a set. Nope. We are invested, my invested man. Invested heavily. I got some Tom DeLong guitars. Robbie's got the hop space. We got the outfits. Like we're going all. It's we want it to feel as much like it was in 1999. And you know what? Most importantly, we got the energy. Very much so. We got the chops. We practiced. You know, two weekends ago, I was sick as a dog again. Last weekend, we made up for it. We practiced for like four hours. Yeah. We played around 40 songs. We had yeah. a nice long set for you guys. You know, the songs aren't that long, but there's a lot of them. We practiced for like four hours straight, Mm -hmm. felt great, came home, immediately laid on the couch. So I'm putting in blood, sweat, and tears for y'all. So please come out and have have a good time. Think of it as kind of a a boy's presents. Blink 405. Immediately after, our friend Ryan Drake is going to host one of his legendary 90s, 2000s dance parties. Mm -hmm. So you got two awesome things going on for the low, low price. Five dollars, five smackers. That's what I'm saying. Like, so it's it's that's what I'm saying. If you're a fan of early or late '90s, early 2000s pop punk or anything, he, a lot of stuff he plays is like going to be boy band. He plays a lot of like in sync, fucking, and then you know, like Blink 182, some Britney, some Britney, Christina Aguilera. But, but then he throws in some like shit that you forgot about. Oh yeah, there's some Nelly. It's I can, like I can a, imagine it now. Some it's Luda. A, it's a throwback time machine party. So come dressed to impress like it's '99. I love it. 
Well, we're going to get right to the show right now. Episode 165 on with the show. My dog died. I figured I'd start out the episode getting this out of the way. Yeah. But I felt like it would be a disservice to myself and to the legacy of my favorite female four-legged friend. Your favorite bitch. She was my bitch. But no longer. My dog Olivia passed away last week at the ripe old age of 14 years old. Old dog, especially for a terrier or for a Boston Terrier. That's pretty old for a Boston Terrier. She was born in 2005. Mm -hmm. I'm reading her eulogy right now. It's all, it's, I'm actually reading it off a mirror. I have it tattooed on my back. Uh, she was born in 2005. She was a rescue dog. I was living in Norman at the time, uh, living with a couple friends of mine in a nice big house that was way too nice for us to be living in at the time. Hotel Gunk. Such a great house. Yeah, we, we lovingly referred to it as Hotel Gunk. Why, I don't know. I wanted a dog. We had a yard. I had a stable job. Mm -hmm. I was settled in. I knew I'd be living there for quite a while. Loved it. It was a great setup for the time. No better time to get a dog. Yeah. I was like, you know what? It's time to get my dog. You know, I grew up with dogs. But they're always your dad. Dog. They're always the family dog. Mm -hmm. It was time for me to get a dog. I wanted a big dog. I mm -hmm. wanted like some sort of German Shepherd mix or a lab, you know, a, a big dog with a big red dick. And a big dog takes just a big, massive shit. Yes. Oh. I want the shits to be robust. No. I wanted a big dog. Mm -hmm. I grew up with big dogs. We had a golden retriever, Rottweilers, again, German Shepherds. Big dogs. We had bird dogs. Yeah, but now your dad is a little dog man. He is. He's a little dog man. But like he does. Them, he wants another lap. Like them wieners. Yeah, he loves a good wiener. He's a wiener boy. He's a wiener man. Mm -hmm. I'm the wiener boy. Anyway, so I'm looking, I'm looking for a dog. Mm -hmm. I'm shopping for a dog. And I go to a couple rescue shelters, you know. So you went like, and you weren't like, like, I guess at that time, online stuff wasn't really that big. So you had to like, go in person. It, it existed, but not mm -hmm. in the capacity that it does now. I wasn't really on the computer as much. I was like, I'm just going to go to a couple shelters, see if any, anything jumps out at me. At that time, so I, I'm noticing a lot now, because we have friends in that, in that business, business industry or whatever of uh, animal rescue. Now it seems like there's a lot of breed specific rescues. Oh, yeah. Was there a lot back then? Not not that I knew of. Not okay. to say there wasn't, but I wasn't aware of it. That's not where like you that. picked up Olivia. No, I I went to the uh I went to two. The first one was a there wasn't really any dogs there. There was like three dogs and none of them really jumped out at me. Then I went to the second one, it was just the Norman Animal Rescue. And I'm walking down the the cell blocks. You yeah. Know, it's it's I'll tell you what, you want to feel better about yourself or worse about the world? Go to a rescue. And, and not not a breed-specific rescue. Go no, to like an a, animal shelter. a city animal hey, shelter. Go to a kill shelter because it will make you feel bad. I used to do it all the time. I used to go, when I was looking for a dog myself, I would go to a lot. The one I would go to most frequently is, the, I think it's the Oklahoma County one that's kind of in Dell City. Like uh, off 29th Street over yeah, there. Yeah, I know. I would go in there a lot and, it's, and you, you walk in and you can't leave without wanting to just open the gates and let all those fucking dogs out. You know what I mean? Like, take, I want to take all of you I home. I know, man. It, it's tough. So I'm looking around. They had quite a few dogs. There were a couple. I was like, oh, you know, she's cute or he's, he's kind of a sweet boy. Mm -hmm. But I just wasn't. I knew when I found the dog for me that it would be obvious. And mm -hmm. I didn't want to settle. As much as my heart yeah. went out to all these dogs, I was like, Cupid would pull his bow back and that arrow would just right yep, in your old that heart. Little, that little paw-shaped yep. arrow. Bing. And I'm walking around. I'm like, man, you know, none of, these, none of these are speaking to me. And I was like, dogs can't talk. No. I digress. <laughs> Not, nothing for me. All right. So I'm walking out. And I, I notice in the back corner, like right by the door, there's like an empty, an empty cage. And I walk up and I look inside because most of the dogs come to the front and they're either barking or growling at you, mm -hmm. you know, or trying to look extra cute. Take me, please. Yeah, get please. me out of here. Yeah. And I look back in this in this pen and in the very back, curled up in a little ball, was this little bitty Boston Terrier. And I could tell she was full blood. I could tell she was she was a little sweet girl. She didn't know what she was doing there. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I laid my eyes on her, I was like. That's my dog. 
Mm -hmm. That's my dog. And I, I didn't want a Boston Terrier. Mm -hmm. Truth be told, I had dated a girl a couple years before that who owned a Boston Terrier, and I couldn't fucking stand him. He was mean. He was fat. He stunk. Put a bad taste in your mouth with Boston Terriers. Totally. BTs, as we call them on the street. I, I kind of thought they were ugly. Mm -hmm. And because of this monstrosity that she had. Wait a second. ILBTs. I love Boston Terriers. I love it. I love it. Gives a whole new meaning to the phrase. Look that up on, on Google if, or on YouTube if you want to feel better. ILBTs by Joe Walsh. It's mm -hmm. a great, great American song. So I see this dog. And she's like shivering. I mean, she had this look in her eye, like, "What the fuck she am had, I like, doing?" She like just here? arrived. Yeah, like a, like a when you see that uh, uh, scared straight show where it's like these hard ass teens who get thrown in a cell block, and some big fucking dude's like, "Oh, you think you think you hot shit?" Yeah. Like, oh god. I'm gonna toss your salad. What? Ah, <laughs> what's that? Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I saw her, and and I was just immediately like, I just knew, man. I knew yeah. right away. And I went up and asked the lady working there. I was like, hey, OK, this is the one. Can I can I take her into one of the little uh, the rooms, you know, the, yeah. the flirting rooms? I don't know what you call <laughs> it. It is. Yeah, it's, it's a it's, it's a like courting a, room. It's yeah. a motel motel for dogs. Yeah. You know? So I take her in there and she hops up in my lap and she's shaking. She's nervous as hell. She was a little skinny. She wasn't like like depraved like malnourished, or malnourished. Yeah, yeah better word there. But I could tell she maybe wasn't at the tip top of her game. Sure. And she hopped up in my lap and I was petting her and she was licking me. And I was just like, holy shit, this is the one for me. And the lady was like, well, she just got dropped off like, no joke, 15 minutes ago. We have to keep her for a week in case somebody comes looking for her. And she, and she was shooting me straight. She was like, I don't know who would just drop off this full blood Boston Terrier. Well, come to find out, they found out. It, she, uh, um, my, my future dog was owned by a college girl mm -hmm. who got the dog and then had to move back home could take it with her couldn't take it with her so they dropped this beautiful little little cutie off yeah. there which you know all all dogs are beautiful all, all dogs go to heaven great movie it's it, very good i i couldn't watch it now though mm -mm. i might cry mm -hmm. you want to put on some marley and me oh boy hey that one's rough that's a real rough one yeah. You mean Dupree? <laughs> so she said, we have to keep her for a week. Yeah. This is, this is, she didn't tell me all that other stuff until I went back to get her. And she's like, we got to, we have to get her fixed. Got to make sure she's up to date on her shots, blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah. It's like, okay, cool. I was like, can I go ahead and pay now to, to reserve my dog? Put a little money down. Yeah. Yeah. Down on the dog. <laughs> and she was like, sure. So it was $40. Happily shelled out to uh two twenties. And came back in a week. 40 bucks. 40 bucks to adopt her. Nice. Came back in a week and she was mine. Did you have a little cage, like a little uh, carrying? Nope. She Did rode right in my lap on the way oh. home. Yeah. She wasn't, she, you know, she was two years old when I got her. She was yeah. born in 2005. Like, I got her in 2007. Fits in your hand, right? Eh, a little bigger than that. Okay. She was two, a, two, a two hander. A two hander. <laughs> my, I love my BTs where I can grab them with two hands. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> so I, t I take, her, take her to our house that I share with my buddy Daniel and my buddy Wes. And everybody just fell in love with her. She was a little shy at first. She mm -hmm. was very quiet. She wasn't a loud dog ever. Really. So when, when she was fresh, when you brought her home, did she look like a bobblehead dog? Yeah, she was. She was. I mean, she was two years old, but she was still pretty small for a Boston. Some Bostons get pretty big and yeah. beefy. She was always kind of small for a Boston. They always skinny. have big heads, though. Yeah, she was a little apple head mm -hmm. and very cute. And I was like, what do I name her? What do I name this dog? And, and it was kind of the same thing with, with the choosing process. It was, the name will come to me. Yeah. And I looked at her later that evening and still hadn't given her a name. I was like, she looks like an Olivia. And I, I kind of named her after Olivia Newton-John. I, I was just about to say that. I was going to say like, you know, like when you're watching like a biopic movie and they always make it like something super obvious. Like I just watched that. Uh, uh, What's the queen one? Bohemian Rhapsody? Because I was at home by myself waiting for laundry to, to finish mm -hmm. so I could put on clothes and leave the fucking house. I'm like, Classic. Ah, I'll watch Bohemian Rhapsody. And there, there's like scenes where like this, oh, it's a Bohemian, you know, like the whatever just falls in their lap. Yeah. I was, your story, I'm thinking that uh, you're sitting on the couch and she's, you're petting her and you look up 
and you know you're, you have your records kind of out and you just see the cover of an olivia newton john record and you go the grease the grease album yeah cover. And you go olivia yeah that's well, it truth be told i watched the movie grease many many times as a kid mm -hmm. i was the only boy out of the kids and all of my family like my my yeah. cousins and my i didn't have an uncle i didn't have any boy cousins yeah. so i watched a lot of I think that's one reason why I'm such a well-rounded individual and so secure in my, not only my manhood, but in my woman. You're surrounded by, by women. Yeah. Me too, man. Like, I love it. I love it. Watched a lot of Grease. Had a big crush on Olivia Newton-John, especially when she comes out in those leather pants. Oh, at the end. Smoking oh, the cig. Oh, shit, She's got girl. that long ass. Sandy. So good. Oh. Tell me about on. it. Just, just one, this one little, one little side thing with... Uh, Kids watch Grease, right? Yeah. I watched Grease as a kid. That program is totally not for kids. No, it's not. And and you know, when I was young and we watched it, all of that went over my head. Yeah. And then it was like, it was like I hit puberty one day and the light switched and I was like, mm. it's a real pussy wagon. The chicks will cream. Ugh. You know, that ain't no shit. We'll be getting lots of tit. Yeah. Or... Go to the, the first song of the movie. Uh, tell me more. Tell me more. Like that song is like the one friend is like, did you date rape? A? Like that's right. pretty much the whole song. Oh, yeah. Such a creep. Great movie, though. 35 year olds in high school. Yeah. But man, you, you cannot deny that Grease is a good Grease movie. is great. Grease 2, not so much. Not as good. I'm a bit of a five head, but. The, the a award. Five head. Yeah. OK. It's when you have a large forehead. No, it's. Sandy, man. Yeah, Sandy. Sandy. All the way. Come on, all the way. So that's how you got the name. Okay, uh, another side note here. Favorite Grease Babe. Are you going to stick with Sandy? Well, is it bad to say that I liked, uh, uh, who is that real, the, the kind of mousy one? I forgot her name. The, the brush him, brush him, brush him. No, the she nerd? was creepy. Okay, yeah. And wasn't it like a skinny girl? I did like the one who was clearly like 40 with the black hair. With the short, like curly yeah. hair? Yeah. Sandra D. No, that's, 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 what's her name? Damn it. Rizzo? Rizzo. Rizzo. Yeah. I liked, and I'm, I can't believe I'm blanking on all the names. I've seen the movie a million times, but the beauty school dropout. Beauty. I think that's who I'm thinking of. Okay. She was very pretty. Yeah. I, I thought she, she was kind of my favorite, but, but nobody can touch Sandy. No one can. I mean, it's all about Sandy. So anyways, <laughs> Sandy, oh my God. That's pretty good, dude. Uh, so yeah. Anyways, let's fast forward a little bit. I moved around a lot. Yeah. And Olivia always with me. Followed. You know, I moved from Norman to Edmond to Oklahoma City to another place in Oklahoma City to like four more places in Oklahoma City. And some of those places had other animals living there yep. too. So she kind of. She was always great with other mm -hmm. animals. Um, she was always quiet, which was cool. I Yeah, I don't think I. I've ever really heard her bark. The only time she would bark is if I would like rile her up. Like if we were oh. playing out in the yard or something and we're like, oh, or you squeeze her legs and she does the predator growl. Yeah. That mm -hmm. was like a party trick I mm -hmm. had. Yeah. I would, I would pick her up in a certain way. I'd kind of hold her legs like a bouquet of roses mm -hmm. and I'd hold her up in the air and she'll, <laughs> you know, yeah. as she got older, she started developing some breathing problems. Mm -hmm. So she snored like a 60 year old overweight man mm -hmm. and just always was kind of, always just kind of honk like a little piggy. Was, a honking, yeah. I found it endearing. Yeah. After she passed away, that was two of the hardest things. And I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll get to that in a second. Anyways, to wrap this up, I don't want to spend a whole show talking about my dead dog, but everybody loved her. She, it was, it was interesting when, when the day after she passed away or maybe that night, I posted a little Instagram thing, you know, cause Nothing's worse than something like that happening. And then you get reminded about it. Like, you know, if a friend of mine was like, hey, how's Olivia? Mm -hmm. Oh, well. So, you know, and it's funny, man. I, I kind of had a, a moment. Tell them all my girlfriend's dead. Exactly. I had a moment of, of personal growth, I guess, because sometimes I'll see stuff like that on Instagram and I'm like, oh, brother. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. you kind of cringe at it a little bit. But then when it happens to you, it kind of puts things in perspective. So I kind of learned something that day. Yeah. And th the thing is, is, so I posted a little thing about her. Nothing, nothing super long winded. Just a little, little, hey, miss you already. And uh, the the comments I got were just so sweet. 
I got a lot of, lot of likes, a lot of comments. That was great. It made me feel better. Like just these like nice words about how great, great of a dog yeah, she yeah. was. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And I'm having, I'm actually, well, I got home that day. Actually, so around 4.30 on last Thursday, I get a phone call from Kate. She came home a little early from work and she was just like hysterically crying. Like to the point where I couldn't understand the words that were coming out of her mouth. So you knew something went down. Yeah. And my first thought was maybe the dogs got out. Yeah. She was freaking out. And so I was like, calm down, calm down. What, what's going on? You know, trying to kind of bring her down a little bit. And she told me what happened. She she got home and, she, you know, turns out she let the dogs out. Woof, woof, woof. As we do. You come home from work, what's yeah. the first thing you do? Let the dogs out. Let them out in the backyard. They got to piss. They got to shit. Mm -hmm. So she lets the dogs out. Waits about 10 minutes. Calls them in. They're chilling on the back porch. She's like, ah, oh, they're fine out there. It, it was a warm day, but the sun wasn't beating down. It was overcast. It wasn't as hot as it usually mm -hmm. is. Olivia loved outside. She loved to kind of like lay in the sun and just kind of like, like, a, like a pig on a spit, you know, yeah. like a little piggy out there getting some sun. She, she, she checked on them. They were fine. And then she waited about five, five, ten more minutes, opened the door to let him in. Our new puppy, Griselda, just runs right in. Olivia's nowhere to be found. So Kate walks around the side of the house and she's laying there dead. And Kate brought her to the back porch and like got a towel and like wrapped her up in it mm -hmm. and called me freaking out, you know, as, as, as she should have been. And I came home from work early that day and we decided to bury her under this big tree we have in our backyard. And you know, I wanted to do it. I wanted to get it over with a, cause it was sad Yeah. Two, the little one was across the street at the sitters and we wanted to kind of take care of all that before she came home. We didn't want to explain to a five-year-old what Robbie's doing with the shovel in the backyard. Yeah. So we got all that taken care of. And I, I started digging and I was like, this is a bad idea. Digging this close to a tree. The roots, bro. Well, that I was going to say, you know, you see that little beaver with the hard hat and a shovel before you dig. Yep. Did your dog die? Before you dig a pot. Right. It's a I mean, new angle they're going with. How far do you dig? Right. You know? I dug like two feet in the ground. That's perfect. I mean, they, what, six feet for a human? Yeah. I think two feet for a dog. Yeah. If you put it to scale. Yeah, you know, it's, it's about scale. the same. About right. So I'm digging. It wasn't super hot outside, but it was humid. I haven't sweat this much in years. I mean, it was rolling off of my face. I was crying a little bit. Yeah. And and I'm getting out like my pruning shears and like cutting roots underground to try to get this hole deep enough and big enough. I get her in the ground. I cover her up. Kate comes out, you know, we kind of have a moment. And then we go get the little one, bring her home, sat her down, told her what happened. Explain to her what's going on. Cuz the first thing she said when she walked in the door is, "Where's Olivia?" I Did looked, you Oh yeah, dude. I mean, we were, we were in tears like the whole night yeah. pretty much. And, you know, I just told her, I was like, well, this is what happened. And we, we explained it very nicely and gently and sure. And lovingly. Well, it, I think that that's a good thing. It, it she, she's how old is it? five, she's five. That's a good age to learn. I, I mean, some people might think it's young, but I mean, you got to learn sometime yeah. about that. And I think that that's what having a pet's supposed to be for kids. They teach you responsibility, but it also teaches you, Hey, this life is finite. Totally. She took it really well. I think, A, I think the puppy helped a little bit. Yeah. B, I mean, she's getting a little older. She can start to understand things. It was kind of hard, though, during the weekend. A couple times she was like, when's Olivia coming back? Mm. And we had to be like, well, she's not. She went to sleep forever. She was mm -hmm. very old. She had a full life, every, you know, tons of love, mm -hmm. tons of memories. You know, we're doing the thing you do. We're like, go through your phone and look at old photos and show yeah. them to each other and stuff. And anyways, to wrap all of this up, um, go to fatbison.com if you need a gravestone marker or a, or a plaque for your dog. Is he making one for Olivia? He's making me one for Olivia that we're going to mount to the tree. And it says her name with a couple of paw prints and 2005 to 2019. That got me all teary. It says... Forever the sweetest baby Aww. underneath it or forever the sweetest dog, something like that. That's adorable. So it's a little nice little memorial. Yeah. We're just going to mount straight to the tree that she's buried under. And man, she had a great life. Like, she, I mean, she was my best friend. Yeah. I, mean, I know it's the old adage, man's best friend. But dude, she was <laughs> like, I know, I know, I know that there's some bias here. 
to me, she was one of the best dogs I ever met as far as just like chill, sweet, e- easy, beautiful, yeah. easy, so easy. So I love you, Olivia. I miss you. And hopefully we can talk about something a little more uplifting. But I did want to just kind of bring it up because it was sure. a huge deal that happened well, in my life. When, that, when, when you told me, uh, I was, of course, like in shock. And then, you know, obviously thinking about you. And then on my way home, I was thinking, damn, my, Charlie's getting it. Cause you don't, you don't think about that. You know, like, well, they're getting, they're getting, it's the same thing we say to ourselves. Oh, I'm getting old. Totally. But dude. you don't think about it. Like, and then like, eh, it could. And, but what would you do? You know, like, what do you do in that situation? You don't know until it actually happens. And yeah, it's like you said, man, like it isn't, it, the adage is an adage for a reason. If you have a dog and it's your dog and you raise it from a fucking puppy, to 14 like that's that's your you're with they're with you all the time dude that's nearly like half my life yeah you know they're, they're with you all the time at home some i mean i'm sure she slept with you yeah you hang out did you, you talk to them yeah i talked to charlie all the time she had a million nicknames yeah you know it, it's crazy man uh i don't know it was really rough dude because that was like the first that was the first animal i ever buried you know, yeah, like that was dad's job growing up. Yeah, I never had that. My dad, um, I had a dog, Smokey, which was a chow that I was way too young to oh, all of us were way too young to take care of it. So my dad, I found out years and years, years later that he uh, just let it let it go in the wild. Like, what are you going to do? But uh, then my dog, uh, Fido. Had forever from a little puppy. I, th- I got him because he looked like a, as a puppy, looked like a German Shepherd. That's a classic name, by the way. Fido. I didn't name it. My buddy I got but got him from Brandon Davis. He his dog had a litter of puppies, and it looked like this is gonna be a big German Shepherd. I want it. Yeah. And I ended up getting the mutt because he didn't get any bigger than like shit. What Nate dog is now. Right. So it's like had that dog forever, and he was my buddy. And then I moved away. And uh, I couldn't take him with me, so I left him with my parents. And then he died, and I got the phone call. Yep. Like, hey, just let you know, Fido died. And I was like, uh. Yeah. And that's the thing, man, with Olivia, I knew she was getting old. Mm-hmm. Like, she was blind in one eye. Her her other eye was starting to get pretty milky. <sighs> yeah. We could, Kate and I could tell in the last, like, I'd say four months or so that she was starting to kind of go downhill. I mean, 14 years old, that's old for a dog. Yeah. Regardless of the size. I know bigger dogs have shorter lifespans than smaller dogs I mean, normally. I mean, like 11, 12 usually about. Yeah. And, you know, I knew I knew it was on the on the horizon, man, but you're never pre- prepared for that phone call. And it was rough, man. It was rough to accept. But what I'm glad about is that she kind of went out on her own terms, just like she came into my life. Like, I'm glad that she wasn't. Or at least didn't seem to be in a lot of pain. Right. Or we had to like bottle feed her or surgeries yeah. and all this drawn out shit that happens at the end of you see anybody's that a lot. life. You, yeah. You, like I've heard friends talk about that. Like, you know, your dog gets cancer and you spend like thousands and thousands of dollars to keep the dog alive. But it, you can just tell that it's in pain. Like, I don't think same thing with uh, Fido from what I, I was like, was he sick or like, no, they just like uh, it was winter time. So, uh, when they instead of letting making him go outside to pee and poop, they would just let him go in the garage and they would just clean it up. So right. they let him out in the garage, and they went to go let him back in, and it, he was just dead. Yeah. But so it's like okay, he was just old. Maybe he just we don't know. Maybe we don't. No one knows exactly what it's like to die because no one's done it and come back. Right. Like so, maybe that's just what it is when you're just like, eh. yeah. Maybe it's just like this great exhale. It's like. Ugh. It's your death rattle. And that's yeah. why, like, if you have a lot of pee and poop in you, it comes out. Because oh, you're yeah. just, like, tired of holding it in. Yeah. I'm just done. I'm done. I'm All done. the stress and everything just goes yeah. away. Yeah, man. But, yeah, it was rough, dude. <clears throat> but, you know, I look at the bright side of things, or at least try to as much as possible. And mm-hmm. I mean, dude, like, I, I did a lot of thinking since then. And just, like, thinking of all the fun times we had in this, in this like, little things about her, you know. But every once in a while, there's there's, like, a little reminder, like, and this is the last thing I'll say about it, but so like that night we we went to sleep, uh, Kate and I, after we put the little one down and so Olivia 
sometimes she'd sleep in bed with us. It was really up to her, but some, uh, we had a, like a dog bed on the floor at the foot of our bed that she would sleep in every night. She loved to like, she had a little blanket in there and she'd like turn circles like nest. Oh yeah. Yeah. And like, and she didn't, you know, since she's a Boston, she didn't have a long nose. So she tried to like use her nose to like get under the blanket, but to no avail. Not going to happen. Sometimes for minutes at a time trying to do this, it was the funniest thing. But most, most of the time, even if she did jump up in bed and sleep with us in the middle of the night, she jumped down there in her spot. Mm-hmm. Well, in the morning I woke up, it was Friday, we were off work and every morning I kind of did the same thing. Like I, I wake up and I'd walk over in the dark cause our room stays really dark even in the morning and I'd walk over and like pet her to wake her up yeah, to let her out first thing in the morning. Well, I did that Friday morning. Like I walked over there out of habit and like put my hand down in her bed to pet her mm-hmm. and I just touched her empty collar like Kate folded her dog blanket really nice and like put it on top of her dog bed and kind of like placed her collar on top and like, yeah, a, like, a nice like, you, like you fold a flag for exactly. a veteran wife. And yeah, yeah, I reached down and I, my hand just kind of went inside that empty collar and man, I just like lost it. Yeah. Like it was rough dude, but it's getting easier and easier. Life goes on. Hey, my friend. Time heals all wounds. That's right. And, and so does laughter. Hey, we're bringing it. We're true. Well, not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> well, and, now, okay, so you had something funny that you brought up to me on the phone the other day, yeah, about a classic boy's misheard lyric. Yeah, yeah. So, um, my wife and I were eating at the Empire Slice House. Great pizza, great people. Uh, and I was walking to like, hey, let me take a piss before I get the food. So I'm walking to the bathroom, and it's you know one of those restaurants that play. It not just it, they play cool shit or whatever. So they were playing like I guess some old, um, I guess hip hop station, maybe just like a '90s, and it was regulators. Uh, I didn't catch it because it's a noisy restaurant. When you get further back, you starts to die down. Yeah, and it's in the middle of the song. And I walk into the bathroom, do my thing at the urinal, and it's the classic part of the song. You know, the the song sets a story, and our our uh, a great story. Our protagonist. Warren G, he's just out for a stroll, you know, and then some a couple guys who are up to do good. Well, he he does a, a dice game, uh, and they jack him. Mm-hmm. And there's a line that says, "They took my rings, they took my Rolex." I looked at the brother, said, "Damn, what's next?" Mm-hmm. Then you know our friend Nate Doc has his line, and then it comes back, and there's a line that says, "Uh, what's the line before that?" I can't believe they're taking. Well, you tell me. This is your misheard lyric. Warren's wealth is the the lyric, right? But I can't believe they're taking more than twelve right dollars, right? <laughs> like when I was a kid, that's what I thought he said. It's like, of course, like you know, the rule is you only take twelve dollars, man. You don't take more than twelve. No. You're taking more than twelve dollars. Like I have a hundred dollars on me. Yeah, but if you jack me. Yeah. If I interrupt your dice game and you yeah. jack me, <clears throat> you only get twelve dollars. You only get twelve bucks. That's, That's the maximum. Go about your day. Yeah. See, it's so funny though, dude, because I had a misheard lyric in that song too. I thought it said, I can't believe they're taking Lawrence Welk. The Lawrence Welk show. Yes. The classic PBS show with ballroom dancing and and singers sure. and bubbles. Yeah, yeah. I thought homeboy was carrying around the Lawrence Welk DVD box set that you buy from the, you know, OETA fundraiser oh, yeah, yeah. and you get a free tote bag. Yeah. Free tote bag. I thought he was proudly walking home from an FYE mm-hmm. or a blockbuster music yeah. or a Camelot tower record, something like keep, that. Keep them coming. All of those with a brand new, slightly used box set of the Lawrence Welk show. And those motherfuckers wanted it so bad. They took his rings. They took his Rolex. I can't believe you're taking Lawrence Well, I know. Take the rings. Take the rings. And see, what I what I hear in that is he's getting jacked. You know, his, he, he's trying to get his mind off of being jacked. I don't know if you've ever been, like, beat up before. I have been beat up You don't want to think yeah, about it. I've been beat up-ish. So his mind, in an attempt to uh, focus off the pain, thinks about PBS taking Lawrence Welk off the air. Right. So he's like... Oh, I can't believe they're taking Lawrence. Well, they like the fat cats, the fat cats. Yeah. At OETA. Yeah. Dude, that's so funny. 
public broadcasting fat caps. Yeah, yeah, right. You know, it got me to thinking about 90s hip hop and stuff. And the other day I got home from work and a song was in my head by this amazing rapper from my childhood named Shaq Diesel. Are you familiar with this artist? I See, I didn't know Shaq Diesel was... I guess that was. I thought the name of the album was Diesel, but I guess Shaq Diesel was his... Maybe I'm no, wrong. Gnome Diplome. Right. Maybe Maybe it is. Maybe... Because I remember the logo just said Shaq. Yeah. It was like in a... Like in a... a square that's like diamond shaped. Kind sure. Of, you know, yeah, a square. Yeah, yeah. A, a little 45. But it was rotation. it S-H-A-Q? Yes. Yeah. And for listeners, I did S-H on one side, and then on the other 90 degree, you do... AQ. Exactly. Making a beautiful, like, square diamond shit. Yeah. And I maybe love that it, in the 90s. Maybe it was just Shaq, but the I think the album was called Shaq Diesel. Okay. But whether he went by Shaq Diesel or Shaq or Shaq Attack or Boom Shakalaka or Supercalifragilistic Shaq Azalidocious, whatever you want, he's got an album. In fact, I think he has two. He's got two. two. Okay. Well, I put on Shaq Diesel. Mm -hmm. uh, I was singing the song in my head on the way home. And of course, as soon as I get home, if there's ever a song in my head, I subject my beautiful, loving girlfriend to whatever shitty music well, I'm listening to. Like a virus, it has to attach itself to another host. Yeah. It's got to get it out of you. Yeah, you do. It's like, get this out of me. It's like an exorcism. You don't want it to just go out into the wild. A shaxorcism. Yes. You want to just pass it along to somebody. So I come home. Dude, there are like three singles off of that first record. And they all have videos, and they're all just as bad as you could imagine. Um, so do you hear something real cringy? Shaquille O'Neal has had one, two, three, four, uh, five. Five records. No way. Shaq Diesel came out in 1993, and he had Shaquille O'Neal... You Can't Start Up the Rain in 1996. Shaq Fu to Return in 96. Shaq Fu. Respect in 1998. And then Steel from the movie. Music from the motion picture soundtrack Steel, which I guess he rapped on those. As well. Okay. Okay. That's that's four more than he needed to put out. That's six more than he needed to. I remember Shaq Fu, the video game. I didn't know he put out a second record. There was a game for the Super Nintendo slash Sega Genesis. Maybe even the Game Boy. Shaq Fu, maybe even the game Gear, Shaq Fu, a fighting game starring Shaquille O'Neal wearing a sleeveless shirt and basketball shorts. I guess he knew martial arts as well. Uh, yeah. Was it kind of, am I thinking about it wrong or was it kind of, were the graphics Mortal Kombat-esque where it looked kind of like real people? I want to say they were, mo they were like, what do they call that? Character modeling? Yeah. Where they did look. It wasn't like a Street Fighter where they were clearly cartoony. It was it, more of like a realistic. But look. was it was it a side scrolling kind of a thing where you're like a Streets of Rage or something like that? that See, I don't remember if it was that or if it was a full fledged like one on one fighting, fighting game? game. I don't know. We'll have to do some research. Yeah, Shaq Fu, <laughs> boy howdy! If, but if you go back to Shaq Diesel, man, um, where where he was really good at really super early '90s things like breaking backboards. Oh, or yeah. cardboard cutouts. He love a good cardboard cutout. He wasn't. How do I say this? He wasn't the best lyricist. Why? Why, why makes you say that? Well, things like he has a line that says, "I forget what the first rhyming, you know, the end of the first rhyming phrase is," but he follows it up with. Like that dookie diarrhea coming out of your butt. And to this day, I remember hearing that for the first time in like 94. Uh-huh. To this day, that line makes me cringe and get douche chills of like the nth degree, man. Okay, so here's, I'm watching a YouTube. Okay, so that's, so uh, yeah, it's that's the a, Street Fighter. That's a fighting game. But they use the same kind of, I guess, what do they call that? Sprite or emulator or whatever of Street Fighter and just super impo like imposed. Okay. A character that doesn't look like Shaquille O'Neal whatsoever, but yeah, it's a fighting game. Okay. And the characters have basically the same moves as Mortal Kombat characters. Dude, so. I'll tell you what we should do. I should pull out my Genesis. Find a copy of Shaq I'm Fu? Gonna I'm sure it's a dollar on eBay. Yeah. And maybe we should do maybe we should do a little Shaq Fu report in next week. Yes. With our findings. For sure. And we'll keep a tally. 
Mm-hmm. And maybe the winner. I'll th- I'll think of something. Sorry, I'm a little I'm a little knotted up right now. I'll think of something. We'll do something fun with Shaq Fu. For sure. Have you played Shaq Fu? I've never played it. I could never find it anywhere. I worked at a used video game store. Mm-hmm. I worked I actually worked at a couple video game stores growing up. And the one I worked at that was like a shithole, we had a lot of copies of Shaq Fu. Many copies yeah. of Shaq Fu. In fact, it was kind of a joke. We like made a display with all of our copies of Shaq Fu, like on the end of the counter. What were they like a dollar ninety nine a cartridge? Yeah. Two bucks with the case manual, everything. Like it was ridiculous. Can't give that shit away. <clears throat> I saw a copy of Shaq Fu today, man, come to think of it. I went down to Norman to run an errand for work, and I, had, I, was, I was going to meet somebody to talk about some merchandising and sure. stuff. Well, he wasn't quite there yet. Uh, he was coming back from lunch. So I walked across the street to a pawn shop to kill like five minutes. He said, mm-hmm. I'll be there in 10 minutes. I was like, cool. Well, I'm not going to sit out here in the heat. I'm going to walk across the street to the pawn shop, have a little look around. Never, sure. you never, never know what, never know what's going to be in there. Never know what you may find. Could be gold. There was a copy of Shaq Fu. I should have fucking bought it. On Genesis or SNES? Genesis. I could have dusted off the old Genesis. Genesis 2. Gave, gave it a little. Whew. I was, I was always, me being like a little anal retentive, I was always the uh, Q-tip with the alcohol. <clears throat> now, okay. Because so, I always heard blowing in it made it rust. Uh, you know, there's a lot of those kind of tidbits mm-hmm. that you hear around. Uh, I was, the Nintendo had the little flat one. It was like a flat Q-tip. And it had little edges on the end of it. Yeah. And you clean out your head, yeah, the with, head that way. With your NES cleaning kit. Yeah. So, okay. Did that work? Did that do anything? It did. You weren't supposed... I still have one. I actually mm-hmm. still have an old NES cleaning kit in a box somewhere. You weren't supposed to put any alcohol in the part that you actually slid into the console. You do it on the game. But just the game. Like deoxidize. Deoxidize. Yeah, same yeah. thing. Yeah. I mean, more or less the same thing. So, but. what about... Video head cleaners. Do you remember those? You snort it. I thought they were a racket. They were like 10 bucks. Yeah. It's like a clear case or whatever. And it comes with this little vial of juice. Yeah. And you put a drop of dot in the thing, the hole. I think it was just like denatured alcohol. Yeah. And you but put it don't in. Don't people use those as poppers? I think some people snort head cleaner. Yeah. Because I remember the Ziggy's over off 39th, the Ziggy's head shop. Yeah. They sold head cleaner. And I'm like, dude, I think that, what's it called? Anal, anal, anal nitrate? Amyl nitrate? Yeah, I think yeah, Is what they refer to it as? Yeah, I guess Or it so. has something to do with it or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, you basically you huff this. You pop it. You just. Yeah. <laughs> and it, supposedly, this is what I've heard. And if you have the facts on this, email us, boys at boyspodcast.com. Yeah. Or call us, 405-582-0242. Let us know. I'm pretty sure... It's big in the gay community. Poppers? The, the amyl yeah, nitrate. Yeah, yeah. Because I think, supposedly, from what I've heard, through the grapevine... It makes dicks taste great. No, 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 no. Okay. They already do. When you snort it, <laughs> supposedly it makes you relax. Mm-hmm. So it's supposed to make your sphincter relax. Oh. That's just what I've heard. And if See, it works, it works. If it's I've, proven, it's I've good. done that great. thing one time. Ew. But it's when you're at like a... You're out... You're... With people, and you're about to go to a thing, but you're meeting up at a, somebody's apartment, and there's like seven of you there, and then someone whips it out, and they're passing it around like they do it all the time, but you don't. You've 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 done a popper, yeah, and so you don't want to be a square, right? So I go, so what do I do? <laughs> oh, you just you just like huff it. So I did. You stick it up your ass and do a headstand. I did, and I handed it back to him, and immediately, I felt. Like I could knock down a brick wall. Like like the Hulk? I, I, fe- I felt fucking great. Really? Like I didn't feel like, like, a, like, like coke high, but like everything in my body felt fucking amazing for like 15 seconds. Right. And then it goes away. Have you ever done a whip it? Uh, that's... I'm talking the classic CO2 cartridge in the balloon. Never done a whip it, or I think you could use like ready whip, like aerosol. I was gonna say I did. I did the white trash whip it, which is when the at the end of a whipped cream thing, you just yeah. Done Does that. it? What's it feel like? Was it similar? It's it's a very low grade version of that. Whack. I've always wanted to try whip it. I had a so I used to buy weed off this guy many 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 years ago, um, and he was a big fan of whippets, and he had like this kit, and they they sold these at that Ziggy's. The whippet kit. The whippet kit. It had a little red hat with different levels. 
It had a black sleeveless turtleneck and a whip. No, it it was like this little. It looked like a little water gun, like like one, like a cheap water gun. Yeah, yeah. But you stuck the CO two yeah. cartridge, which the only time I've ever seen those CO two cartridges were for my BB guns as a kid. Yeah, yeah. But you'd stick it in there, and then you'd stick a balloon on the end, and you'd pull the trigger, and it would blow up the balloon, and it didn't waste any of that precious precious CO two. Yeah. You'd blow up the balloon, and then you put the balloon up to your mouth, and you'd you'd take in as much as possible. Hold it, blow it out, and then just like ooh, do the Mortal Kombat, finish him. How sway? I don't mean to judge anyone who 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 does that, but how trashy? How? I get it, man. Life sucks wall to wall, so get in where you can. But you have to know that's destroying your brain. It, I you know. You can say the same for drinking, you can say the same for sure. weed, any drug, whatever. But man, that's just... That's instantaneously it, fucking you up. It just comes off as kind of dark. Very dark. Right? Sca- like, yeah. Like, like I'm going to huff dark. some gas. Yeah. Which I had a friend, man, in high school who was ha- a habitual gas huffer. Yeah. Like, rag... Like the, that old school tall metal gasoline can. Oh, boy. Rag. Face. Huff, pass out in the See, garage. That's that's not cool, man. You're playing with fire. You're literally scary. Like, I walked in on him once, dude, and he was like out of it. Scary. I can't no. But I wasn't a fucking snitch. I didn't tell his parents, but in retrospect, I probably probably should have. Yeah, super scary. Ooh, yeah. I've never done a whip it. Uh, that friend of mine was really into it, and I mean, he bought these CO2 cartridges by the case. Yeah. I mean, there were like. 50 in each box and he had boxes and boxes of them he's always trying to get me to he was always trying to get me to do one that's too much i was i was just never that that into it man never tried it i'll say this as a very young teen uh before i had done anything uh i got into like punk rock bands but i was this little fucking fat nerd so when bands like you know band like gas huffer and you know there's all these like punk rock bands that sing about like no effects yeah doing drugs like huffing gas and blah 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 and like that sounds cool we yeah. should do that but i'm like i'm never gonna fucking do that i wonder if huffing gas was a thing of the 80s and 90s like What's, do people still huff gas no because you have so much you, there's so many more things you can do now I'm, I'm sure some people do sure i think that it was like a ready avail readily available thing mm-hmm. i mean that's how we got meth it was like you take these readily available things Mix them together. Mm-hmm. Got yourself some drugs, baby. Yeah. Look no you know, further. Look no further. But, you know. Yeah. I don't know, man. I, I, I Too late in the game now. Oh, way too late. I'm not going to start now. huffing gas as a 38-year-old man. I can tell you that much right no, now. No. No. I've always said that uh, if I'm on my deathbed or a doctor told me I had, like, days to live, I would definitely try heroin. Really? Just to give it a whirl. Just if to, it's if it's worth throwing your life away to so many people, it's got to feel good. I mean, I'm sure it feels great, at least at first. You yeah. know, I've never touched the shit, obviously. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, like, to further your point, if people are willing to put everything on the line, ruin their lives, yeah. lie, cheat, and steal for it, yeah, there must be something to that heroin. <laughs> who, who was it that said that? Like, drugs are great. That's why people will throw their lives away for them they're great yeah sounds like a mitch hedberg thing or yeah. something i don't know but i i say no to drugs all i the always time. say no to drugs any any man-made chemical substance compound whatever get out of my face with it get out of my face with it not for me not for me either man uh your else isn't for me these fucking challenges that are everywhere on the fucking internet all right, what, what are we talking about here man here's the thing so i I'm not hip. I'm not with it. I don't get on Twitter. I don't get on all that shit. But I'll I'll uh I'll put things on YouTube. Like if there's a podcast that I like to listen to, but they have a video format, I will. I'd rather watch it. Right. So you know, you get on YouTube, uh, and then it'll have like this feed that's supposed to be an algorithm fit to what you watch. Well, I saw one that was uh new uh. You know, like the the challenge, the, the first was the plank challenge or blah blah blah. All super innocent k- kind of challenges. What, what was the ALS one? Was that the water bucket challenge? Water bucket, ice challenge. bucket challenge. I mean, you you shared one with us a couple of episodes ago. The 
flying butthole challenge, running butthole challenge. Yes, that that's my favorite. And that's thing they're escalating. So now there's the there's the go to a grocery store, open a thing of ice cream, lick it, put it back. That's not a challenge though. That's just fucked up, man. But they're calling that a challenge, right? And there's yeah, the yeah. the milk challenge where you throw milk or fall with it or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And that my, one's been around a while. My thought is, you're an asshole. That's not being funny. No. You're being not. a dick. Yeah. The licking the ice cream thing, I mean, like, I, I think a little bit of trolling is good in the world. Sure. You need a little bit of it. I laugh at some of it sometimes, but that shit's just gross, man. Like, and you know, honest, in all actuality, in all honesty, it's not the grossest thing you could do. No. I mean, you might, you might kiss that person that would lick your ice cream. Okay. Yeah. But- it's just fucking stupid. But doesn't it and seem gross. doesn't it seem like like idiocracy where they're watching ouch my balls? Yes. Like I feel like we're 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 sliding further down the slide of ouch my balls. Oh, 100%. And the and the fact that it might be something to get a rush out of doing something like that, mm-hmm. but when you record it and put yourself online, totally self-incriminating. Yeah, that's your face, bro. And, well, and some of those people that did that like face yeah, charges. They, yeah. And for sure. You know, I don't know. It's I don't want to sound like an old fogey, but yeah, it's just gross, man. It's ridiculous. Have you bought ice cream since then? I'm not. I'm not an ice cream eater. So when all that went down, people were like, "Oh, I'm never eating ice cream again." I was like, "Hey, <laughs> beat you to it." Yeah, you're like leg up on the competition. Up, I eat. Uh, I eat mostly vegetarian, so anything that I eat that's going to be in a store, it's pretty much going to be sealed. Okay. In a thing. Yeah. Now, if they were doing that to a good pork chop or a good steak, I'd be pissed. Uh, you can't. You got to open that cellophane. You know. That's right. I'll tell you what, speaking of that, so I've been doing that keto diet. I buy a lot of steaks. I buy a lot of pork chops. Yeah. Buy a lot of bacon. A lot of meat. A lot of meat. A lot of meat. Just brick shits. But my thing is, when you go to the the meat section of like, let's say a a Walmart. Sure. You go there, you look at some steaks, right? Oh, we got some ribeyes. Oh, we got some tri-tips. Mmm, 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 mmm. We got a sirloin. Yum, yum. Ribeye, baby. Whatever it is. When you, a eye, baby. when you go to pick up the <laughs> meat, there's fucking blood on your hands. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's not. It ain't sanitary. There's got to be a better way. There has to. You, you're you going to put this slab of meat, this slab of beef on a, what can, I would describe as a, a, a foam, some sort of a foamy material. A foam tray. A pink foam tray. With a little piece of like. It looks like a fucking maxi pad on the bottom yeah, to yeah. like absorb blood. But here's the thing: that tray, it, the weight isn't distributed evenly, dude. I would gladly pay an extra fifty cents if I were to buy two nice steaks. Let's say I want to grill me and Kate out some beautiful steaks. Oh yeah, marbled, browned on the outside, medium rare on the inside, cooked to perfection, seasoned, marinated, grilled. If I wanted to do that for Kate and mm-hmm. I, I would gladly pay an extra 50 cents for that shit to come in a box yeah like a night or like a plastic thing or you know what they fucking used to do back in the day they would just wrap that shit up in paper and give that shit to i you. think that's cool because you know what doesn't fucking soak through his fucking paper yeah well that like it's like that plasticky like butcher paper yeah you know? it's butcher got, like, paper man it's like plastic on one side paper on the outside and they would roll it roll it roll it so there was several layers yep i don't know if you, i know you don't eat me but i know you used to I've bought a steak like that before. Oh, yeah. It makes you feel so old school Dude. and like cool to like unwrap that butcher I paper. I would buy that. I would go to the grocery store like uh, for Diana sometimes and, you know, I'd go to like the Whole Foods or wherever it had like a, a little butcher place. And instead of buying a thing that's pre-made, I'd go, can I get uh, two pounds of whatever? Yeah. And the guy would like make it and wrap it up in that shit. I'm like, Dude, this is cool. I like it. Yeah. I wish there was a way to do that for like... I guess I could do it with like cheese or something, but that's not as cool as like someone handing you like just a slab of raw meat in your hand. There's something to be said about the classic butcher. Classic butcher. I I, I picture a man that he might kind of look like Mario. I yeah. don't know why, but he's got a mustache. Yep. He's short, maybe a little heavy, wearing all white, all white. Maybe got the. Sh- Does he have a chef's hat on he or might, some sort of he, hat? It'll be a hat, not maybe a chef's hat, but a butcher's hat. It's Are like there a butcher's hat right? Okay, now picture everybody listening. Picture your favorite butcher, your dream butcher, dream you butcher. Picture your dream butcher. Are there sausage links hanging in the background? Well, of course. Is there like a white table? You got what kind of what, what's he holding? 
He's holding a meat cleaver. A cleaver, right? He's holding a cleaver yeah. for sure. I mean, what other cleavers are there? Does he have like a red bandana on? He'll have uh or uh, some sort of a scarving, yeah, a something scarving, around, something some around scarving, the neck. Some skirting. So when you, know, you can cover skirting. his face for, to not get blood All that pathogens. flying blood. Flying meat and so yeah, and the back wall is going to be white tile, mm-hmm. like all white tile. Mm-hmm. Everything's white back there cuz you want to see where that blood's going. Yes, and clean it up. A giant drain in the bottom. But yeah, sausage links hanging. Uh, it's normally just one guy. Right. Or it's a team of two. I, I'm, I'm picturing one, but I can see two. Yeah. What about uh, one of those classic sausage makers? Oh, those little, yeah. You the grinder. And it comes sausage out with grinder. The, yeah. Yeah. I, I see one of those. Uh, one of those, uh, those meat slicers. You kind of put the meat in the thing. Like at Arby's. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing that's weird. I mean, I want to go to a butcher shop now. I want like a meet, real authentic butcher shop. I want to meet my dream butcher. I want to find the butcher for me. Have you thought about that? Like not going to a grocery store, but finding there are butchers. They're, they are few and far between, but they exist. Find yourself a butcher. That's a your dream guy. butcher. A dream butcher. And he'll know your name and you know his name. One thing I don't understand about the dream butcher, though, is in my dream, the meat in the case out front. There's a lot of like lettuce around, or what is that stuff called? The garland? What, what yeah, is it? Uh, garnish. The garnish. Sort of garnish. Yeah. 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 Like they, there used to be at like Mazio's buffet. Yeah. Here's my thing. When I see the display meats, I'm like, I don't want those meats. Give me something fresh. Yeah. <laughs> Cut it right off the cow. Yeah. I see them back there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's usually like hanging. Yeah. Ooh. My dad used to go to a butcher a lot. When I grew up, we had cows and pigs and a couple chickens at, from time to time. Would your dad take them to the butcher? He, yeah. So. Somebody would come out to like when it was time for a cow to be slaughtered, he would somebody would come out and basically kill the cow Mm -hmm. and then kind of like pre cut it up and load it into a truck and then it would be processed at a butcher plant. Mm -hmm. And then you fast forward a week or two, you go pick up your meat. It's all wrapped and labeled and our deep freeze would just be like packed. My dad would split cows with a friend like Mm -hmm. they'd be on our land, but my dad and his best friend would like go in half on a calf yeah and then half on a calf half on a calf and then raise it you know feed it give it some hay let it eat out in the field make sure it has water and then when it came time to butcher it they would split the cost of butchering it sure. and then we had a ton of meat i the mean it would last us a fucking meat. year yeah. man in the deep freeze but i would go to the butcher shop with my dad every once in a while and you know i never wanted to peek behind the curtain no didn't want to see how the sausage was made Mm-mm. definitely not but I thought the butcher shop was so cool and it smelled good, even though it's basically you're just inhaling death. Yeah. But it was so cool and everything was white and clean and pretty. The guy was a little rough around the edges, but his facilities were beautiful. Your butcher's got to be rough. I'm imagining now, I'm su- I'm surprised there aren't more, um, how do I word this without sounding like an asshole? Like mercantile butchers. Right. You know, Artisan dudes, butchers. Yeah. Dudes with like, trimmed like big but trimmed yep. beards yep. with a little curly mustache mm-hmm. glasses even though they don't fucking need them and then like a fade of some sort like some six hundred dollar lace-up boots yeah tattoos yeah rings what well, yeah why isn't there like an artisan butcher in the plaza district yeah they charge you exorbitant amount of money for your meat i'm gonna go i'm gonna find a butcher man find one man they're they're, they're out there <clears throat> when i think of butchers i I can't help but think of the movie, So I Married an Axe Murder. The butcher scene. Oh, yeah. That that might be the most classic butcher scene. I would think so. At least in my limited viewing experience. Sure. Oh, man. I'm going to find a butcher, dude. And I'll report back, just like I will with Shaq Fu. Maybe I'll go to the butcher, go pick up Shaq Fu, grill a couple of steaks. Play around. Play, play a couple rounds with some with some blood covered hands. Uh, Make it authentic. Blood soaked hands. Well, anyways, listen. Sorry if this episode was a little sad, but I uh, wanted to get that off my chest. Thanks I'm glad for, you did. Thank you, Josh, and thanks for sticking with us. Um, got a lot of exciting things coming up. Yeah. So, uh, hopefully, we'll see you at the show at the Speakeasy again saturday september 28th yeah. doors at nine five bucks blink 405 ryan drake dance party gonna be a good time we're gonna repeat it every week till that till it comes up so it comes up so get used to it sorry we love you hug your dogs tonight 
and we'll see you next week. Bye.